while we are so much forcing on skills, right, skill ko importance etiko tha, and how much we need to learn, practice the skills to move ahead, we have been talking a lot about these things, whether it be entrepreneurship or it be work or it be your personal life, anything as such. But there is a paradox which we saw, uh, we researched uh, with the national newspapers that we see. We have 600 openings for news of every day. 600. And with that 600 jobs, every companies are facing the problems of having lack of human resource. And people at the same time are telling they are unemployed. And they have to go out. They have to go out, they have to go and work outside. And at the same time, I guess we talk with Richard on this, we have people coming from outside and working in Nepali companies. And that is a need that we have created in Nepal. So our discussion will be them themed on the same objectives, which we talked about skill and the job prospects and how do we adapt the knowledge. So I'd like to start with Thai ma'am. Uh, and everybody else, uh, one by one, is what is one skill that you learned while you were uh, studying or you were working somewhere else before starting or initiating the same thing that you are doing today? Actually, if you, uh, to your question, if you ask me what skill, I cannot say a uh, particular skill, but what emotion I had into what I am doing today is, I believed in education, I linked the education with the potential of my country, our country, Nepal, that was tourism. So that is how my sentiment got into mixing tourism and education and starting the first tourism management college in Nepal at a higher level. So that was the emotion that drove me to do what I'm doing today. I think all these years, whatever I've learned in my MBA or in my BBA or whatever be it, I think it's the soft skills that really make a person. And the one skill that I've really learned throughout these years are time management skills. So those are the soft skills that have been taught from when I was a young kid. How do you manage things? How do you prioritize stuff? And I think that soft skill is really important in, for me to progress in life as well. One mindset I find it more important in my life particularly was, I, which had a perhaps profound impact on me uh, when I went to US. And during the orientation week, one of our professors uh, told us that we don't teach you content of the book will teach you how to learn. And this attitude, how to learn, has been very important in my life. In summary, two things really, critical thinking, applying those concepts, questioning them, and the other is, is logic, really. Logic and clarity of thought, and how you write, but also how you communicate with others. Those are really important things. More important than the, the book stuff, I think, generally. What are the things that you, when you all of you hire uh, people in your companies, in your organization. So what are the three things that you look for in a person when you hire them? Attitude is number one. I mean, I'm really attracted by someone that comes in with a bright attitude that shows that they really want to be on your team. But the clarity is also, I, I sort of said that already, but just how clear people are and how understandable they are. Now, some people criticize me in the office. Believe it or not, when you're the boss, somebody's always criticizing you. They think I maybe emphasize that skill too much. Um, and that may be, we all have our biases. But I really, I find it a hard time to work with someone that, that you know, fries your brain. Do you know this term, fries your brain? Just like you're just so overwhelmed by everything they're telling you. It's just too much. You know, you need short, clear, incisive information. So that, that's it. What else? And, and the other is know your stuff. I mean, that is really important. If someone has, doesn't, you know, if someone studied economics and they're not able to describe clearly, you know, that the trends that Nepal is facing and the challenges and what needs to be done, then, then they're also out. So you got to know your stuff, but be able to communicate what you know well with a positive attitude. <laughs> That's it. Um, in hiring, I mean, there are two, two ways uh, I would look at hiring. One is what that particular job requires, sort of the technical side of that particular job. And, uh, and then there is a general sort of what, uh, as Teach for Nepal, we would look into people in general. So, um, of course, there would be like, we would, when we 
are looking at each candidate, we would look at can this person do the job. Second role, because we are a non-profit organization, what's a very big factor for us is uh, what we call a mission fit. Uh, is, is this person aligned to our mission is one big thing. Second is, um, I mean, it sort of uh, goes with my first answer is that, d does this person, uh, is there a willingness to learn? Because nobody, I mean, it doesn't matter what you've done in your uh, life before working at East for Nepal, where you graduated from, each job comes with some challenges. And, uh, and there, there will be so much to learn in that context. So do you have that attitude? Can you learn? Or I mean, you come, a lot of people come thinking that they know everything. And it becomes very hard to work with people who already know so much. Right? If they know more than I, can, I do, then what can I, how can I work with them? So willingness to learn becomes a very important uh, factor. And third, and most of uh, what Richard said, I mean, things around critical thinking, when problem, and also problem solving skill is very critical because in our work, we, there's so much human interface. There's, uh, because we work with the communities and society, that means you can't really predict a lot of things in advance. Uh, too many things, there are too many moving pieces. That means the person needs to, when faced with a challenge or a problem, they need to figure it out. One of the big things we say in Tiswa Nepal is figure it out. So basically one of the things that we really look into is whether they're in line with the vision of the company. And the vision of the company, because we're from a media group, there, it is certainly different from what any other business house is looking at. You know, The responsibilities that we carry is certainly higher towards the society. So that is something we look into, number one. And number two would be very technical in terms of uh, you know, if I'm hiring for a journalist, I would need journalistic skills out there. They would have to understand the new, uh, you know, media the new changing media landscape as well. So those are the very job specific things that we look into. And obviously, this differs from position to position. But when we do look in general, it is whether that person is fit with the same vision as us, um, as the organization in, in general and uh, the softer skills, whether they are keen to learn, like the gentleman already mentioned, and you know, whether they have um, you know, the willingness and the commitment towards uh, work ethics. So that's pretty much it, what we look into. For me, attitudes is very, very important. I would consider my first priority, attitude, then body language. I'm very particular. It's when I meet a person, or especially for an interview, it's the body language. I think if, if the body language is not correct, then I would not hire the person. Hi, Azzy, I'll again ask you a question. You run a hospitality tourism mixed college. So what kind of knowledge do you think the future of the students, like the students who are studying right now and in next five years, the amount of hotels and resorts that are uh, coming in, over in, in Nepal, in Kathmandu. Uh, so what do you think are the basic knowledge sets, skill sets that these people, apart from the curriculum, uh, should be getting? Since you are in the hospitality industry, what is the um, value that you give to a, your uh, customer? You, uh, should you choose to go to, a, uh, to work in a hotel or uh, in any other hospitality sector, service, since uh, the hospitality sector or the tourism sector is the service sector. So how do you render service? You know, we forget little things like smiling. We forget little things. You know, those um, education, uh, during your classroom time, nobody tells you that keep smiling or nobody tells you stop scratching or nobody tells you, you know, all those things. So it's the ambience through which you need to understand and learn that. So probably besides the curriculum, besides your food and beverage, besides your front office, besides your housekeeping, besides your ticketing, etc., like the other qualities that uh, we render to our students is, I think, um, how you respect another human being as yourself, how you retain that human value, even in this 21st century. It does not matter how we retain our culture. We don't need to copy the West. They are copying us now. We have forgotten all our culture and we are copying whatever they are doing. So we don't need to do that. We still can you know, develop our own um, culture, 
keep our culture, our uh, sentiments, emotions, and still, you know, we can uh, be in the hospitality sector. So besides curriculum, besides exams, those are, I think, some of the things that I would really, um, we give to our students. And um, I would also, since speaking to the younger generations, please keep those things in mind. I would like to get to uh, Sisidai. What we are talking about, the application of knowledge and these things, you run a great movement, Teach for Nepal. A lot of people uh, have been employed with it and a lot of people have gained a lot of knowledge by, by other peoples. And uh, which you point like the first job you take is building the nation kind of thing. So why did you start it? I have two kind of thoughts in my mind. Is because one, the, what she said, the knowledge have not been quite applied when the teachers come and teach things is one or is it just because you see that there are a lack of a lot of activities a lot of informations to the students in these rural areas where you work on Nepal's most talented people young graduates never choose education as a career because of certain mindset if you graduate with a first division distinction, two fields of stream Nepali young people are expected to pursue. Engineering or business or management. Who ends up pursuing education as a degree? Is people who have barely passed. I mean, in Nepali context, I mean, SLC bolla bolla pass gare ko manchi haru. Matre shichya, egara bara ma education pord chao. Tees pachi, then the only path they have is to pursue higher university degree in education. Most of these kids are graduate of Nepal's rural public school who start their life in a very disadvantageous position than all of us sitting in this room. And in one side, we have a problem of not having, as Asis, you're opening up, that in one side, business and institutions are struggling to find quality individuals in workplace. On the other side, we have masses of people who simply are unprepared to take on those jobs. People like us who are privileged and sitting in this room, we have many options. We don't need to be sitting here. We could be in anywhere in the world, not just in Nepal. But that eight lakh something get kitty or, or young people, they don't have that choice. And why we, we, why we started Teach for Nepal is to make sure that six million children who are going to public school in Nepal right now also have same opportunity that you and I have. That's the whole reason why Teach for Nepal exists. Great. Richard, we have heard from them and uh, Nepal is not the only country that you have visited on your job. So is, what do you find like the same situation in different countries and in Nepal and with the prospect of labor and the application of knowledge that you have seen outside and in Nepal. What, what do you find the gap between the problems that we are talking about right now? Nepal, more than most countries, there's such a gap between those who are best prepared and those that haven't had the same opportunities. And I think, you know, getting, there's a culture, you know, there's a social, economic hierarchy in this country, there, it's in every country in the world, but it is a little more pronounced here. And, and you see the best of the best, the best in the world. You know, I, I tell you, I bring people here in different fields, economics, social security. They meet senior people from government and also private sector. And really, they're just blown away by how smart and capable they are. And yet there are all these other people that haven't had the benefit of quality education from an early age. And I think that's, that's what the challenge is here, is to, to provide the best kind of education for those that are young and disadvantaged. And China, everyone's kind of more the same. You know, you get a lot bigger middle because of the public education system. Thailand, it's a very similar situation. Malaysia. So most of Southeast Asia is a much more equalized education system, whereas here we have this challenge of hierarchy, reinforced by cultural hierarchy as well. I have a few more questions, but before that, I would like to ask if anybody of you have any questions to them. Now, when we talk about education, which is important, material education is important or spiritual education is important? I think both is very, very important. In order to gain more material, you need spiritual. Why spiritual? 
is you know you value um, human beings you value one another your for yourself in order to earn like nowadays we talk about stress management why are we so stressed because we are just running and moving and moving from one thing to another we don't get time to rest so why do you need this certain spirituality in your life to calm you down to slow you to help you think properly there was another word that i think in the beginning somebody used critical thinking when you are peace and calm at yourself then only you can think properly and if you are not joyful inside if you are not happy inside how can you deliver that uh, outside what you don't have you cannot give so obviously in order for your well being spirituality is important and then you can pursue your material very very smoothly to heights i believe in that i think she put it really well but um you know in today's world it's not about either or like i don't believe that there is something as right or wrong or left or right or black or white and so on so it is more about a balance act of everything so uh, as long as you can strike the balance with yourself and it's different for you or it's different for me and anybody else in the room as long as the balance is correct for you personally i think that's where you excel thank you life has two element one has a professional element the other has a personal element your relationship is also important also you have to prepare young people or education ka purpose towards nation citizenship bhanne pani education le garni ho telle garda hai the point of education is i think ultimately to prepare young people or all of us to to lead a life to be effective in workplace and to become or uh, active and engaged citizenship and within that i don't see duality of materialism and spirituality my name is bidanand zai and i am ceo of nepal pest control and i want to ask you that the, i have the client the british school they provide practical knowledge i have seen that the sosa to cut the furnitures to wild building tara hamro country ma kina theoretical matra ta ama ab lo mai bachelor sakina chhe tara aile mai kaam gara ga field ma mala ki kai ko pan chhe ni ke knowledge ja haina tyabara थ्योरिटिकल नलेज कहीं के भाई अभी हमी प्क्टिकल नलेज में कोकस कर दूं तो हम दाजू भाई सब जान विदेश गई रहें क्लिनिंग कर रहा यहाँ पर क्लिनिंग को ट्रेनिंग दे रहा अच्छे बड़ी डलर कमा थे क्या वाइ टू अंद थिटिकल मात्र क्या प्क्टिकल से नलेज कहीं एबीसीडी पढ़ा तो एप्पल को एप्पल हमें देखा देखते हैं तो अनुसार अब जैसे हमें काम कर पाने पर्यन तो एजुकेशन के थ्रू के पाने पर्यन जस सर्टिफिकेट वन ली क्योंटिकल शिक्षा मंत्रालय में यही नई डिस्कसन चालू कर तब जो यूथ अगड़ी बढ़ु पर्व प्रोग्रेसिव एजुकेशन जो अभी भाई अभी में भर्खर भर्खर दुई चार वा स्कूल सुरू कर लाचन रो चाहिए यो सब तब प्क्टिकल नलेज सब तैं सी रो अगर चाहिए लाइफ स्किल हो भोलि हम कारपेन्टर नहीं होने होना तर के भोलि हम घर में कहीं पर्यटन आपू ले तो सकता लाइफ स्किल हो रहा हम करिकुलम में एकदम ठूल गैप छो करिकुलम चेंज हो जो तब हम यहाँ बस है इवन इफ यू लुक एट आर पेरेंट्स टुडे दे वुड रादर हेव अस गेट अ एम बी ए डिग्री एट पा विद प्लम्बिंग डिग्री डोन्ट यू एग्री विद मी यू माइट एक्चुअली जस्ट बी अ टेलर एट अ बैंक है एम बी ए डिग्री करीबीए यू माइट एक्चुअली गेट अ लट मोर मनी योर सैलरी इफ इट इज अल अबाउट इम्प्लॉयमेंट है बींग अ प्लम्बर ओर एक्चुअली स्पेसिफाइंग इन कारपेन्ट्री बट नो वी विल चूज बिकज अफ द सोसाइटी वी लिव इन द सोशल इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर दैट वी लिव इन वी विल चूज टू गोट फर अ बैचलर्स डिग्री नट एक्सपर्टाइज इन एनीथिंग एंड देन स्टिल कम आउट एंड लुक फर अ जेनेरिक जॉब सो आई डोट ओनली थिंक दैट इट इज द academicians or the government but it is the social stigma that we carry with different kind of job roles in nepal as well you know that actually pushes the society into a certain kind of um, education system okay so it's a bit of both i would agree i would say hamro education system kina fail bhaira cha bhane hami pani past ma banchi ra chhau people who run our systems both at a culture system institution and governance level they benefited from that and they think that works but it doesn't work for you and i and it doesn't work for kids who are starting grade 1 today because when they become 20 25 years old the world would be much different and because you said you are an entrepreneur i think my call for all young people is let's figure this out 
so that the kid who is, who is enrolling in grade one will not have to ask this question 25 years down the road. There are a few quick questions that I'll ask you randomly, and uh, I would like to have a very brief answer about it. What is a good option identifying the gap between the current and the required level of knowledge and the aptitude, or keep on hiring the new people? For me, I think I would make uh, people with me uh, better day by day, and uh, in-house training and all those things. Okay. I need young talents, I need creative people, okay? So when I see them, when I spot them, I just pick them and then I let them do what they can do because that could be a next best big idea. So it is not always about like training in the institute but also picking up the smart talents and getting, letting them, empowering them with infrastructure to do what they can do. I would always go for finding perfect person but unfortunately world is not. So you, I mean, uh, then you have to pick at someone who is at that some level that you want and then continuously training and supporting and nurturing that talent. Never expect your company or anybody to make you prepared. <laughs> you have to do it. You're, really, those that succeed are the people who do it themselves. So you, you have to learn on your own too. With this, I would like to request you to keep moving forward with the things that you want to be and with the things, with the knowledges that you want to gain and apply them in every day. Thank you so much. I'll sign off. Thank you. General Management of Turkish Airlines Nepal upon this stage to provide token of love to our panelists and moderators. Mr. Ashish Thakur, Executive Director, Global Private Limited. Ms. Chaya Sarma, Chairperson, Nepal College of Travel and Tourism Management. Ms. Samriddhi Givali, Executive Director, Nepal Republic Media. Mr. Sisir Khanal, CEO, Teach for Nepal. And Mr. Richard Howard, Content Director, ILO Nepal.